Hey beloved, greetings to you and welcome to this video. We will uh, continue with our topic called the secret of marriage as, an, uh, as a part of our series regarding God's secrets revealed in his word. Um, before we continue, I just want to mention something. Uh, what I, I'm sharing with you about men and women, obviously that is how God has created it in order to be a full complement of each other. So I hope that it's clear. Because as we know, especially in, and uh, I, I would say hugely in Western nations, Western societies, there has been a lot of cross-pollination <laughs> going on between men and women. As you can understand, we are going to talk about that too when we get to the topic of roles, role assignments. But just for you to know, be aware of the fact that right now in the world, in this day and age, a lot has been changed or a lot, a lot is already changed and it will be even a lot wor uh, worse after the snatching away then then it will be crazy but now you can see already and you know what i mean you can see already how crooked things are becoming to be and it is this is just the beginning i'm afraid so i just want to make you aware of that in the uh, in the developing countries i would say there you have more of that that role assignment or role division if you want between men and women uh, as it was designed by god i'm not saying 100 percent, but it is more in that direction but in the developed countries in the western countries oh my goodness so you know what I mean. Think about it. It is, um, it is very telling. Let me put it like that. Very telling. So let's continue with the slides. This was the last one. So we already went through the fact that women are much better at communication, right? So um, let's continue. So looking at deception, we can conclude also easy, easily that men are much harder to be deceived. Yes, they are much, uh, uh, how do you say that? Um, in, an, in any case, men are harder to be deceived after all because they pay attention to the content of the proposition the case as is while women can be misled much more easily after all they are focused on the way something is presented so let's park here just for a moment the serpent in the garden of eden do you think that serpent approached eve on purpose of course of course that serpent waited until Adam was somewhere else and then he approached Eve because Eve was much more prone to deception oh yes so when he was talking to Eve um, let's say it was Adam and he was talking ab uh, about what he was talking to Eve, right? So that did God say that uh, you will die, etc., etc. Adam would have been immediately able to detect the lie, the, the piece of lie he incorporated in his communication. Adam would detect it right away. But Eve listened more to the he she was more um 
uh, drawn or attracted maybe to the way he was talking, the serpent was talking, convincingly, for instance. So again, communication, I will repeat it, 7% content, only 7%. 38 is tone of voice and 55% is body language. So again, I think that Eve was uh, distracted by the way the message was brought. So Eve ate from that fruit, Adam came. And I can tell you, I believe, that Adam was not deceived by the serpent. The, the woman, Eve, was deceived, not Adam. Adam immediately saw what happened. He concluded immediately that his wife would, is now a mortal and she would die eventually and he would still live. And I think he chose to be mortal together with her. So he chose for his wife. Yes. That he, so he decided for his wife in that sense. Again, just like Genesis 2, 24, 4 is talking about, a man shall leave his parents and he will cling onto his wife and they will be one flesh. And that is exactly what happened. So Adam ate on purpose. Eve was misled. She didn't eat on purpose. Adam ate on purpose to become also to become mortal. Realize that. Let's continue. Men are more focused on what they hear. For instance, about a beautiful lady, which makes those men want to see if the story is, is true. So they hear something, but then they want to see the evidence, so to speak while women are more focused on what they feel and what makes them feel good nice words that are uh, whispered in their ear that make them feel good about themselves so those men who are very first in uttering these nice words to women those men are deceivers in much cases or in sorry in many cases uh, and women often still often fall for that so be aware again be aware men and women so can you now understand I told you already that I was brought up in an evangelical Christian uh, uh, atmosphere so I know that there are many more women in every each and every evangelical church not a not a little bit no many more women why is that because those churches the preachings the music the singing etc the, the the decoration of the 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 hall the, the the building is strongly focused on appearance and that is soulish so that's a soulish focus that's not spiritual that's the other way around that's the opposite of spiritual and that is soulish so evangelical churches um, I, I, I won't advise you to visit one to see if I'm right but if you want be my guest always many more women always it's because of the spirit behind it and I'm talking about the literal spirit one of the sons of God Oh yes, let's continue because role assignment is also very important and it is greatly underestimated. The roles between male roles and female roles. For instance, male roles are, are, roles are, are leadership roles. For instance, craft roles, you can also say that because you, they are focused on getting the job done, on the goal. For instance, creating a product. So that's their purpose. That gives them satisfaction. 
while the female roles are more advisory roles. So the organis organization of uh, complex households, whether it be a business or in your home with many children, that's very complex because uh, you can maybe know what I'm talking about if you have uh, if you grew up in a household with, household with many children, the parents don't have eyes enough to keep an eye on the children. If something happen, it happens here th and they pay attention to that, then all of a sudden something happens there and there and there. So you have to have eyes everywhere. And women are much better at organizing that. They gather all possible options, advice on the best route to take in order to reach the purpose. So the leadership roles are more focused on getting the purpose accomplished, while the female role is, mere, is more um, uh, focused on the strategy part, and that is much more complex than the focus on the, the, the how do you say that, the, the leadership role. That's simple. It's the, it's the advisory role that is more complex because that investigates all the possible options in order to best re reach the purpose. I know, I hope that you know what I mean. So it's the man who makes the decision so he carries the ownership. Don't forget that. And it's the woman who is thus protected by the man in this case. Very important role uh, assignment. You can compare a man as an ideal frame for a beautiful painting. But the woman is the beautiful painting, which will look even more beautiful with the right frame around it. So it's the man as the leader who is standing before the woman and his family, obviously. And he is taking all the hits from the enemy. Mm -hmm. He is um, catching the fiery darts or the fiery arrows by the enemy. It's the man who should catch that. And he, as does he should protect his family. So in that sense, you again you see that the woman is more valuable, has a higher value in terms of role assignments. So I hope you understand this principle because it's very important. God is very structured and I hope you agree with me by now. Movement, God created movement between man and woman and that creates friction. Friction creates endurance. And endurance turns into testedness. Oh yes. And testedness is so important for us on this earth, in this mortal body. Because this in turn creates an incomprehensible experience of glory in the future when the time is right. In God's timing. So movement, it releases forces. And this is a fundamental principle, which is a type of several things. Among others, man being attracted to woman, mankind, or creation if you want, being attracted to God, and, of course, Christ Jesus and his ecclesia, the body of Christ. Very important principles. Let's read in Ephesians 5, 22 to 28. Let the wives be subject to their own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, 
even if even as Christ is head of the ecclesia and he is the savior of the body nevertheless as the ecclesia is subject to Christ thus are the wives also to their husbands in everything husbands be loving your wives according as Christ also loves the ecclesia and gives himself up for its sake that he should be hallowing it cleansing it in the bath of the water with his declaration that he should be presenting to himself a glorious ecclesia not having a spot or wrinkle or any such things but that it may be holy and flawless thus the husbands also ought ought to be loving their own wives as their own bodies he who is loving his own wife is loving himself time is flying again <laughs> when you have fun so let's look at this last sentence it's going to be a, maybe a little longer than normal again so what comes first loving his own wife or loving himself if we look at cause effect ratio cause effect what comes first what's the cause what's the effect loving your own wife or loving yourself of course loving yourself comes first because look at the structure of this sentence he who is loving his own wife is by default loving himself that means that you first need to be loving yourself in order to be able to love your surroundings starting with your wife so i hope this is clear this is a big secret let's continue the passage for no one at any time hates his own flesh but is nurturing and cheri cherishing it according as christ also the ecclesia for we are members of his body for this a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall be one flesh this secret is great yet i am saying this as to christ as and as to the ecclesia that makes the secret even greater but this is the core of the secret moreover you also individually each be loving his own wife thus as himself yet that the wife may be fearing the husband fearing in terms of refearing fearing in terms of respecting as a husband in their own role so what's it all about let's do a little bit of reviewing marriage is an image or type of something far greater and note that this passage does not say that the body of christ is something like the bride of christ or anything like that like that we are talking about a comparison merely this is an analogy but there is another group of believers the bride of the lamb or the bride of the lambkin rather and that refers to faithful israel as a people so that's another group of believers with an earthly calling as opposed to the body of christ believers which have a heavenly calling so here it's about explanation of the relationship between christ jesus and his body in which of course the perfect analogy analogy of marriage is used so it's about women submitting to their husbands as to the lord it's a comparison between as such between the lord and the husband for the husband is the head of his wife just as you see the point even so as 
Christ is the head of the proclaimed assembly, the Ecclesia. There is a shift here versus of 1 Corinthians 11.3 where it says that Christ is the head of the man alone and God is the head of Christ. But here it's the body of Christ that is seen and described as one joint body. And thus Christ is the head of the whole joint body being the Ecclesia. This refers to position and role and not to a literal human body part like the head or something like that. It's about position and role. So it's about a model that is created by God. Verse 23 says, And he is the savior of the body. Thus the husband should be the savior of the wife. Oh yes. Husbands, Love your wife as Christ loved the Ecclesia. How so? By sacrificing his life for her. Oh yes. Now you see the, the role assignments better in terms of value, right? He does that by setting them apart, Christ does, cleansing them in the water bed, the word, to present for himself a glorious Ecclesia, and then the question becomes, who does it therefore? Exactly, he does it, Christ himself. So this is a model of the division of roles between Christ Jesus and the Ecclesia on the one hand, and the man and his wife on the other hand. The husband is the head, and thus he serves his wife, and that means he, fa he facilitates his wife that's what leadership is all about it's about surfing always so he puts his wife on a pedestal and honors her for who she is oh yes so he gives his life for her and this mindset and attitude makes the wife submit to her husband with ease and love and both will learn humility that way because the man is the leader and as such is serving his wife and the woman is smarter than the man but still learns to submit to his uh, to her man to her husband so both learn humility that way that is a fascinating principle in God's plan just as a husband is sexually attracted to his wife Christ is even so physically attracted to his ecclesia I can assure you he cannot wait to meet us in the air loving your own wife is evidence of loving yourself and your body the principle is that the husband and wife are one flesh uh, with each other. So the first step always begins, begins with the man's love. So the man always takes the initiative and in the bigger picture, the love of Christ, obviously for his Ecclesia. Marriage is actually a substitute for fellowship with the Creator. <laughs> the man leaves his parents, but who, who was Adam's parent? That was God. And the man hangs on to his wife. So as such, it is a picture in mini miniature of what will happen later between all creation and God. Do you see that principle oh, also? So the man leaves his parents and therefore marriage is a substitute for fellowship with his parents as such. Okay, this is what Christ is doing with his Ecclesia. It's a model by analogy. And the last slide 
This secret is so great. Remember, in the resurrection, there is no marriage. And in the body of Christ, spiritually speaking, even now there is no male or female. And later, so already at the rapture or the snatching away, this will be immediately a fact for the body of Christ when united with Christ. No male or female. So this has a deep reason and also great consequences. We will experience incredible glory compared to which the greatest orgasm will be child's play. Can you imagine that? I can. Whoa, I cannot wait as well. So marriage is only an intermediate step. It's a type of or image of the real and huge gigantic fellowship that we will have have with the God. Oh yes, that will be total satisfaction to the infinite power. That is the secret of marriage. You better get used to it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.